this is a follow-up uh, to the question of a colleague from Rockler about rice. Do you see a correlation um, between rice production um, and access to credit and land ownership and the increasing petroleum prices? That's my first question. Okay. I think there is a correlation. Rice, rice prices, access to credit, and uh, rising petroleum prices, right? Um, if you look at the supply chain of uh, rice production, um, of course, the transportation, uh, transport, transporting the rice from one farm to the other, uh, other until the time it reaches uh, uh, the, the, the market uh, would entail um, transportation costs. And given that uh, the farm market roads are actually not still there, um, farm, farm to, the presence of farm to market roads is uh, one of the issues affecting the low productivity in the sector. But uh, at, at the same time, uh, access to credit, um, how, can, how, can, how can our uh, farmers uh, produce the rice if they don't have the capital to buy, uh, to, to buy the inputs, to plant the rice, pay for irrigation, and all the production costs uh, involved? So um, yes, they are correlated and they are all contributing a lot in terms of the high prices that we see in, in the market. But the reason I ask is uh, there's been mentioned about the serious campaign of the government under President Duterte against corruption, but it's been also said that what we have today are farm to pocket roads. <laughs> so I don't know whether it will require the fourth uh, revolution so to speak, to find uh, the corrupt ones in government <laughs> and to rid the government of all these malpractices. We can, we can actually uh, apply all these new technologies, AI, um, big data. Um, we, they can be applied or given blockchain <laughs> uh, in order for us to really, I mean, all the transactions of government would be uh, transparent if uh, we will be able to have all these technologies or apply apply uh, big data, for example, because they, they've done it in other countries like in Singapore. They were able to uh, put into jail uh, corrupt, uh, would you believe, teachers, <laughs> corrupt teachers. Well, it has something to do with uh, their uh, procurement of uh, office supplies in uh, one of the schools in Singapore. But because they were uh, having this uh, big data, they were able to uh, track down uh, who the culprits were. And so um, I, I, I think uh, applying, applying all these new technologies uh, in our own system would help us uh, make uh, our uh, uh, resource utilization more effective and at the same time be able to catch uh, all these uh, corrupt uh, practices. Thank you very much. Not to say that, you know, of course, government has said, the executive has said its policies about uh, contractualization, but I, I, I think we have to now start realizing that there's a different environment, a different landscape that's emerging. Like, um, Ms. Basilio earlier pointed out that a grade one student will probably have 10 occupations in the course of his or her lifetime. Others would suggest five or six jobs, you know, whatever. But the point is, we used to be thinking along the lines of just, you know, what will I want to be when I grow up? One job, right? And you like, we, want, we all wanted to have job security. But perhaps now we need to start rethinking that model of job security and rethink it in terms of income security rather job, the job security because there might be phases as part of your, you know, five, six jobs or Ten occupations where you might be shifting from one occupation or job to another. That's not necessarily bad. You know? Provided that there is some kind of social protection 
that will enable us to go from, to transition from one phase to another, right? Of course, we have to start thinking of all these models. I'm just pointing out that we've been having one paradigm before, but now I think it's, it's about time that we start realizing the landscape's changing. And there are models that are being tested, even in other countries. For instance, universal basic income is being tested in some countries, in Africa even, uh, you're in rich countries and even very poor countries. But they're experimenting. So maybe it's time for us to experiment also. 